Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Shaman King episode number 28. Okay, the previous episode, um, we ended at a cliffhanger at one of the, <laughs> you know, most tough cliffhangers where Ren is down and he, he's losing blood and I think he is probably in a lot of danger unless and until someone comes and actually treats him. So there are this problem and they're facing opponents which are a lot more stronger than they can ever like you know like than they are currently Horo Horo, uh, Chocolov and Ren. So yeah that's like a big problem and we don't know what's going to happen and my like you know my, I think at least is that Yo is going to somehow come here because uh, in, in the previous scene where Yo's dad when Yo's dad goes away to go back to his teammates uh, we see Anna and uh, you know like Anna and her team actually going to those kids who are Yo's dad's uh, Mikiko's uh, teammates go to them and help them Yo was missing from that team and as far as I could remember Yo was with Anna so where did he go then most probably he's coming here and I don't know it's just a guess and I think probably he's going to sh going to somehow show up and uh, like fight against these characters while Chocolove and Horohoru takes Ren to safety but we'll see what happens so yeah this is episode number 1028 so without further ado let's get started I'll be putting in the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started okay so here's the countdown three two one go <coughs> well at least uh, the blood has stopped you know or horror has fr frozen it oh my god oh my god oh god oh this is the opening new opening okay whoa okay this is good Okay, this is this is a good start. Wait, is that did she grow up? Whoa, it's a gun. This is chocolate. My God, wow, he looks good. Oh, whoa, Silver's going to. Okay, a lot of new characters. Okay. Oh my god, this is good. Wow, look at Faust. Whoa! What the hell was that? Wait, who's that girl? Wow, this is a lot of new characters. Oh lord. Oh my god. Yeah, they are very much... Oh no. Yeah, yeah, the, the blood. Uh. Oh my god. Yeah. I, the patch and the house on my team knows the secret. Oh, okay.
Oh. Oh, that's why. Okay, understandable reason. Yeah, and some people will go, like, you know, like, become too haughty and too prideful. The opposite also works, you know. People might get too prideful. Unseen potential will have. Oh. 2000. Oh my god. Uh. Okay, I think these guys are like 9000 or something like that. These guys. And as far as I remember, yo is 10,000. Uh, there you go. There he is. Nope. Yes, let's go. Oh! Oh my god, one shot. I, as far as I remember, he's at 10,000 or something like that. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, she he at least feels bad. There you go. He has changed. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's Yeah. Well, yeah, like you're hurting people. Like your reasons doesn't justify what you're do- whoa, it's like their faces. I think it's the first time we're seeing them. Those two? Oh! Oh! Yes! Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you're in big trouble now. Faust and Ryu are very strong now. And he goes away. Oh my god. Oh yeah, Faust is here, he can help. What? Wow. Severe shock. Is it in coma or something? What? Whoa. Body is already dead. Is he alive in inside that means? Wait, what? I don't think this is how it's supposed to go. Maybe they can do something. Oh yeah, um, um, Anna, Anna, Anna can can Anna do something? I think so. Manta. Oh, maybe John. No, no, wait. Uh, I don't know.
It is Jung. <laughs> Look at the smile. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I got you. <laughs> now you'll do whatever I say. <laughs> Kanna Bismarck. Um, nah, we need a little bit of... Usually, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he knows everything, she knows everything. <laughs> the girl's pretty chill. <laughs> wow. What? Oh, okay, that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that day. <laughs> the boys. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, my God. Pointy lady. Yes. Whoa, so I have a lance. Ooh, one punch. Okay. Damn. Whoa. Yeah. Oh. Ectoplasm. Damn. <laughs> Whoa, what the? Damn, so it's a badass old man. <laughs> Ashcroft. <laughs> Yeah, you're basically. <laughs> you, you guys are attacking little children, so. Hmm. Oh. I don't I think he has some tricks up his uh, sleeves. Like there's this weird smoke coming out. Oh, wait, he really did it. What the Okay, I was not expecting that. I thought he had something up his sleeves. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah! 
पंचिंग मशीन का माय oh गॉड वाह <laughs> ओके व्हाट ओ आ बॉय व्हाट द ओके एनफ Yeah. <laughs> Now that you think about it. Okay. Oh, I think it's a. Uh, hmm. It's a thing in her mouth. Hmm. All right. <laughs> yeah. No, um um hmm mm, yeah definitely hmm Terms. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. One point twenty five million. Wow. Oh that's why she's so strong. Okay okay yeah. Increase my food a daily. So maybe Rain will become stronger after this after he comes back. At least 50 points. No, go man. Oh no. Oh no. Come on. Oh my god. Oh. No time for that. No time for that. Oh my god. Chocolate. He's dying. Ah, uh, Ren is dying. Yeah. Oh God. But I don't know what he'll do. Like. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Chocolate, come on. What? Oh. 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. But Hmm. Come on. Okay, so if this fails. Now, like, I understand what he's saying, but... Like... This is one thing that I really don't like. I I don't think that this. I think this is something very like harmful. It's pride. Like they're talking from pride and but I don't know. Okay, I'll talk about this later on. Hmm. Yeah, he's almost dying. Yeah, he knows that Jan will probably, yeah, probably say that leave this. Poor Manta. Oh boy. Yo knows what they're going to say that leave this fight. Oh. Oh my god. Ah. <sighs> Oh boy, here we go again. Um, Yo doesn't want to become a king, so... But okay, shaman king, okay, I understand what he's trying to say, like, you know, like, you're not worthy of being a shaman king. Because a king is... <laughs> yeah. I don't think Ren will be happy after he wakes up. Okay, I think something's going to happen here. Probably, let's see. Will Ren wake up or something? Okay, oh. Again, kind of a little cliffhanger. Alright, a new ending. Okay, let's see. Wait, who is that? Cat? Yeah, it is a cat. Wow. Wait, is that how? Yeah. Oh, now it's yo. Oh, 
Okay, so that'll be a new character, I guess, who... Okay, that's it. We'll probably have something uh, to, uh, like, you know, do with Yo, because in the ending, we can see them together. Okay, anyways, um, this episode here. Uh... <clears throat> All right, first things first, uh, we... In this episode, we see how weak Horohora and Chocolov are compared to these characters. Now, I kind of remember <laughs> the time, you know, when uh, Ren came out, Ren and Chocolov and uh, Horohoro came to the, uh, you know, battle and they fought. And, you know, we saw how Ren was so strong, Chocolov just defeated all the three characters. And, like, you know, it was just, that happened so easily. And I was like, damn, these guys, these guys became so strong. And look, look at the condition now. Like, the, <laughs> the power dynamic in this show is insane. <laughs> like, like, just, like, I'm thinking about the days in, in the first few episodes where Ryu and <laughs> Yo used to fight. And then, like, you know, Ren came in and there was this, this little battle with Ren. And looking at the numbers now, I'm thinking, like, damn, this is, like, insane. So, I'm guessing at that, in the first few episodes, I guess Yo and Ren were probably... I don't know, like a hundred had like a hundred Furyoki or something like that. Now they're like at two thousand, and we are seeing that the upper limit is actually like the, I'm talking about the upper limit by referring to how because I think he's currently the topmost uh, at Furyoku level, and so the upper limit here is like one point five million, and I'm thinking about the days <laughs> of the first episode where <laughs> I guess at that time Ryo and Ren just had like a measly hundred or a fifty. Like, you know, Furyoku or something like that, it was most probably in the first few episodes. Like, and I'm thinking like, damn, like the, <laughs> like the changes in the power level. But anyways, and I'm sure it will change a lot more after this. Like, wow. Anyways, um, so yeah, here we see how they are so, you know, like weak compared to these characters. And they now... Like, the thing that they say here is the reason why they don't actually talk about Furyoku with numbers is because it'll actually discourage people, make people realize how weak they are and they'll get discouraged and give birth to negative emotion. And that's why I guess, like, you know, there's like this rule that do not use numbers to, um, you know, uh, to mention Furyoku levels because that will actually make people no give up and these guys here were talking with such a like you know haughty tone they were like ha huh, those losers you know those uh like you know people who are just so uh you know like such so losers that they after they hear about their free level they'll just give up because of those losers we don't actually tell the free level numbers and i was actually wondering at that time that <laughs> They are, they were kind of, you know, in a way, you know, in an unha underhanded, weird way, uh, actually insulting those people. But, and then I was wondering that, damn, the reverse is also true because we can see characters like this here who are belittling people because of the numbers. And just like how people give up and, like, you know, and, like, lose confidence because of the numbers there are also there's also a different side to that there are also people who actually get too full of themselves become haughty and prideful and because of their numbers you know like if suddenly someone realizes that oh my number is 10,000 and all these different people here they're like at 1,000 or 500 Furyoku level obviously like these characters they'll get haughty they'll get prideful and they'll start belittling people look at people in uh, like you know uh, what can I say in a demeaning way and I was like damn like the reverse is also true so, <laughs> I'm sure like one of one part of the reason is that yeah they did that they hide the power level with number uh, the numbers because <clears throat> they don't want people to actually uh, get discouraged or give up and I'm also sure that there's another part of the story they also hide that so that people don't get too full of themselves I just thought about that situation. It's kind of funny how they were actually demeaning them just because of mere numbers. They're like, oh, you, you two, you're like 2,000 Furyoku, huh? 
like you guys are nothing and then in comes yo and he just like slashes them in like one shot <laughs> my god and then they realize that yeah we need to bail out of here so okay now the hair here is the thing with necro now the way he actually kind of i don't know like the way he actually is stressing and saying the fact that oh my brother he was a wimp he deserved to die or something like that i think he said that in the first episode uh, the previous episode as well i think that's actually him actually hiding the fact that he really is sad of his brother's death i think that is the actual reason like he doesn't want it to seem like he's a weak person he doesn't even want to um actually uh, what do you say it realize himself as well that he is sad of his brother's death i don't know this is just something that i am thinking i might be wrong and because of that he's trying to hide that and trying to like lie to himself as well that's why he's uh stressing on the fact and always telling that my brother he died because he, it was his problem I, i'm not sad because of that like he's stressing on that fact because he actually wants to hide that he is really bothered by his bro brother's death and that really affected him it's just something that i think i might be wrong you know maybe he really doesn't actually think anything but i yeah i, I think that he does think something about it otherwise he won't mention his brother so many times you know the reason why he's mentioning him is because he really is troubled by it and he is sad but yeah all right anyways that was that and then uh <laughs> like all the other people like peot and i forgot the other guy's name uh other two guys name uh they stop and they say that no we need to get out of here because uh faust and ryu is here and as far as i remember faust and ryu are very close to yo's power level so three versus three they're like almost at same power and or maybe even beyond strong stronger than them so they get out of that situation and now here's the thing <coughs> uh ren is in trouble so yo asks jan to help her uh, help ren jan is on the way and then we go to the next scene where we see um jun anna and tamao confronting those three girls and we now here's the thing that's actually kind of concerning we have only seen one one of the girls has power the other two have not even shown their power and but uh, no i think it's not concerning because i like you know anna and tama also have not done anything it's basically uh mm, jun versus i always forget her name and jun versus um that girl what was her name there's so many characters i forget the name uh kanna kanna yeah that's i think that's her name kanna the blue haired girl um so yeah they are only fighting with each other so yeah i was thinking like the only one of the girls have shown that their power the others have not even shown so they're at a disadvantage but now that i think about it like june has only shown her power as well like it's one versus one like anna and um uh, tamao still has not actually started fighting so i'm guessing it's kind of like the same the power level is kind of same but yeah so but there's still something up their sleeves because as we see june attacks the mm, the armor clad character the 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 uh, soul and he he defeats him in a way punches hole through the armor but kanna has something up her sleeves and they did not show what's going to happen but i'm some i'm i'm thinking that she's going to like reveal some kind of a trump card or something and like anna was uh, telling a lot about the ectoplasm now ectoplasm i think it, she was mentioning that weird smoke that was coming out i think that's what she was mentioning by telling ectoplasm and the actual medium intermediate medium is probably the thing that she has in her mouth so i think so but yeah we'll see and i'm most probably in the next episode we'll see more how this goes and i doubt they'll be able to defeat anna you know and by the time that they actually like you know are able to defeat anna like in in, in any way if anna and tamao and jun somehow gets defeated i'm sure mikiko will come in by that time and he'll save the day 
So I doubt they'll lose Anna because Anna seems pretty confident. But even if in some way something happens, Mikuk is on the way, he'll probably come and save them. And another thing I was thinking, uh, the two, the, the, the kids, the boy and the girl, they still have not shown their power. Now they are in this uh, match because obviously because I'm sure they have something, some talent or something. And the girl looks pretty chill, you know, she's like just sitting there. So I think they also have something up their sleeves. So because, you know, Mikuk is so strong. So I'm guessing these two characters, the girl and the boy, being alongside Nikiko is probably probably means that they are in some way same as Nikiko's power level or almost close to him. So you know, like I think that <laughs> I don't know. I I, I might be just like you know it might must, might be just a uh, you know like I think that these the two kids probably didn't need any help. <laughs> I might be wrong, but no, uh, no, they do need help, I think, because otherwise Mikuko won't just rush in, like, you know, like, as soon as he realized that they are in trouble, he just started, like, you know, like, panicking and just decided to go back, so, okay, this can go either way, either, like, like, I'm thinking, like, these two kids are with Mikiko, that means they are definitely strong, so why did Mikiko panic if they are so strong? Because as far as I know, Mukiko is like at 50,000 Furyoku level or something. So they might be close to him. So there's one thing I'm thinking that must might be the problem here. Most probably, these two kids need some kind of uh, a prerequisite for their power to work or something like that. That. So maybe because they are with Mikiko, they're strong. Because Mikiko is not there, they probably are not that much strong. I don't know, like, it, it'll probably be something like that. Like, they need some kind of prerequisite for their power to work. And if that prerequisite is available, they're very strong or something like that. But either way, so, I actually think that they are pretty strong. But they are, like, you know, like, it's, it's just that they're showing that these guys, kids are in trouble. But actually, they, they are not, most probably. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see later on. So, because Mikiko took them uh, as his teammates. Like, if they really were not that strong, why would he do that? Because he's not that type of an irresponsible adult that they would. He would just like you know recruit some random kids who are not strong and who can defend themselves. I doubt that. So it must be that he knows that these kids are strong. That's why he actually took them in his team to fight the shaman fight. Otherwise, why would he do that? Like these girls, they're coming here and they're seeing, thinking like, oh, these little kids are easy pickings. But I doubt that is the case. We'll see. Like, you know, like this is actually something that I think is going to kind of get a little twist in the end. <laughs> like we'll see that they are so strong that they didn't even need any help. But we'll see. Anyways, that was that. And then we get to the next scene where we see Jan Manta in the car. Now... Here's one thing that they're discussing, and I think someone also mentioned this in the comment, that people's furukus increase because of near-death experiences. And since Hao died and you know, resurrected a lot of times, he's so strong. Jan also kind of, kind of does that, like almost in, like, you know, like she's, all, she's almost dying all the time. So that's why her furuku also increases uh, a lot every day. So... After this, Ren will be pretty damn strong. And even more than uh, Yo, as Yo said. Okay, just a sec. Okay. Uh, oh, she says 50,000, not 50. Like, I think that's like a little typo where like there's like a 50 dot zero zero, but I think that's a typo, <laughs> you know, in the subtitles. It's most probably 50,000. So, Jan is saying that after Ren, like, you know, if Ren survives, he'll have 50,000 Furyoku in just one. I'm guessing he is in a very dangerous situation, Ren. Like, he's almost dying. Like, he's dead completely. As, as oh, yeah, um, um, Foss said that his body is dead. So, that means he died. And somehow they'll be able to bring her him back. And if they are able to bring him back, he'll be very strong. And that's why Yo, I think Yo kind of betted on that. That's why Yo said that, you know, like even if I go out of this match, Ren could handle it. 
But I think Ren, if 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 this really happens, if Ryo goes out of the match and he accepts their terms and they he says that okay, I won't participate in the match. If he really does that and Ren somehow comes back alive, he'll be pissed. He'll be immensely pissed because obviously from like as far as we have known Ren, he doesn't like these type of things. He doesn't want anyone to actually sacrifice something for for himself. He is very prideful and he will definitely be immensely pissed. Like, but I doubt that's going to happen because I doubt Yo is going to go. You like, know, leave the match. Like, he's saying that he'll he'll leave it, but I think something probably is going to happen in the next episode, which will not let him leave the match, or something will happen. We'll see. But you know, all right. Anyways, that was that. And then in the next scene, we get to the next scene where <clears throat> now here's the thing. Chocolaf, like you know, and Horo Horo are not content with this, like what's happening here. Now, as I said, I kind of understand what they're saying. You know, just a sec, where is that section? Okay, yeah, he says that, Horo Horo says that I know that if he dies, a piece of our dreams will also die with him. Uh, that's right. <clears throat> that's why I fought until my Furyoku was exhausted and then he comes along and beats them with a single blow i can't stand it how could i lose to a wimp who threw everything to save a friend <laughs> now here's the thing uh i think i kind of misinterpreted this situ like this this scene uh, when i was reacting to it uh He's not uh, angry at Yo, he's actually angry at himself, as far as I could understand by rewatching this scene. He's saying that I cannot tolerate that someone who actually is ready to give up everything for this, I lost to that wimp. But, uh, by, he's, trying, he's mentioning Yo by that. And now, here's the thing, like, I know they're actually frustrated at themselves because they weren't able to do anything there. That's one point. But there's also a little hint of them not being able to accept the fact that Yo is someone who can give away everything to save his life. Because that's like a thing of pride for them. You know, like it's as if like Yo is uh, accepting defeat, which they don't like. In a way, they're actually getting angry at themselves and also, uh, like, you know, angry at their powerlessness and also angry at the fact that Yo is, like, you know, like, not even thinking and just giving away everything. Like, there's no such thing as pride or no such thing as, yeah, pride, I can say, in Yo's mind. And in a way, I don't know, this is a complicated situation. Like, as I said, like, I, I don't actually i can't actually find any fault with their reasoning but at the same time i at least think that <sighs> that uh by like you know like the thing that yo is doing is actually correct because this is like a thing of life and death and he's giving it away his like you know his uh like everything everything of his away like he's giving away his chance to participate in the shaman fight to help him to help Ren and obviously no like you know that's a very difficult thing to do but because he's able to do that that actually shows us how big of a heart he has Yo has and like there's no like you know what can I say like there's no pride or no such thing in his mind there's nothing is stopping him so like, I also think that that's also needed in a way. And that's what actually makes Yo stand out as a, like, you know, character. Like, he is so open-minded, so calm and cool, collected, and, you know, like, such a good character. <clears throat> but, you know, Horo Horo and Chocolove, they cannot actually accept that. And, and I, I think another thing is actually also another thing is actually the... Uh, what am I even saying? <laughs> Another thing is uh, bothering them, which is that they don't even know whether Ren will live or die. So, like, this is like a thing of chance. And that's what he says in the end, Hororo, that if he dies, I'll get you even if, it's, if that's the last thing I do. 
Like, so I think he's actually angry at the fact that Yo is betting on a chance, like betting everything of his on a chance, which might might or might not bring Ren back. And he doesn't even think anything about it. He's just like, yeah, just like, yeah, I give up. Save Ren. So that's probably something that is going on here. Like it's a complicated situation. They're, they're angry at themselves, their own powerlessness and them being unable to do anything and rely on Yo, who is giving away everything for them. All these are kind of doing like, you know, like there's a problem and yeah okay now here's the thing then the next scene marco comes out and he's like oh like you cannot like you know you're not fit to be a shaman king because a king must never sacrifice himself he must sacrifice his uh, subjects if needed now <clears throat> like in a way this actually like here's it a king must make sacrifices to protect his kingdom this thing, this whole thing actually reminded me of um, another anime, like uh, Fate Zero, where if you, guys, if you guys have seen it, like the whole King's Banquet, where Iskander actually talks with um, Arthur Pendragon and how he explains that the, uh, the concept of kingship in Arthur's mind is just something that, uh, like, you know, like, that is not something that a king should have. Like, you know, like, I think he said something like uh, a king should laugh the loudest, be greedy and like, you know, like be the extreme of everything so that whenever the subjects look up to the king, they'll think that, yeah, I want to become someone like him. He sh one should, uh, like, you know, king should exhibit the extremities of everything. And that was like a, one of the best, like, you know, speeches that I've ever heard. And I really respect Iskander for that and the way he actually explains the whole situation. And I think Marco here is also kind of like implying that in a way. He's saying that, yo, you are not like, you know, fit to be a king because you actually sacrifice yourself for your kingdom, not the other way around. And as a king, that's bad. And he's correct, you know, he is completely correct. Yo really is not fit to be a king. And that's what I think, because here again, as we can see here, like, you know, kings should be able to make rational decisions. You should not let their emotions, you know, get in their way. And that's how they can, like, you know, look like, you know, like properly prosper. Because a king is like, you know, like a king should not have favoritism in his head because he is controlling a whole kingdom. It's not one or two people. If he actually favored, like, you know, uh, favors one person just like here where you like you know because of ren is actually sacrifices everything for himself it's it's impartial he he is actually putting the whole kingdom in danger because of one person and that's definitely not one thing something that a king should so as a king i i like wholeheartedly agree with marco here as a king yo is definitely not um, fit to be a king his personality is not like that at all. So he's correct. But at the same time, I don't know. I, I still am I'm really not sure about what the Shaman King actually is. You know, like I like this, like there's like a little concept in my head. I can kind of understand what it is, but I don't know what the actual duties of a Shaman King is, what he does or what, like, you know, what that post actually means. I'm not sure about that. So that's why I can't say anything much about it, but you know, like Yo's ideals are good as a, like, you know, the things that he want to do, uh, if he becomes a shaman king, that's great. But I think his, this type of, uh, um, you know, what do you call it? Personality of actually sacrificing himself for everyone. That's not good. So I don't know. I think like, you know, like he is fit to be a shaman king, but he also needs someone to help him with that. You know, someone who will be able to cover the portions that he is not good at. Like, obviously, a single person can't do everything. So he, like, you know, he can become the Shaman King. But at the same time, he also needs his friends uh, who can help him in uh, other, like, you know, other things and to do stuff which he himself is not uh, comfortable in doing. So I don't know what I'm tr even trying to say, but, you know, like, uh, the thing that Marco says is correct. But at the same time, um, 
Yo's ideals are perfect for become like you know for becoming a shaman king with the things that he wants to do with the world. Like we heard it in one of the previous episodes, uh, in the beginning few episodes, we heard it what he wants to do as becoming a after he becomes a shaman king. Those that was great. Like I really like you know think that if he becomes a shaman king, if he is able to do stuff like this, it'll be fantastic. He'll make a very nice world. But as I said, like you know, like everything is not good like there will also be bad parts you know and there will be sometimes there will be you'll have to make tough decisions and that's something that you won't be able to do most probably it's just my opinion i think of it like this so we'll see i'm sure like you know you will also go through more character development as time goes on maybe by the end of it he really will become a person who is completely uh, fit to be a shaman king in every way possible and we'll see about that like this is very, like this is a 20 8th episode there is like almost half episode left so yeah I'll, I'll be waiting for like you know some more stuff and i'm sure he, he will be able to become a person who can be a good shaman king so yeah and you know what um as i, I was saying all these things about kings and stuff I don't think you like you know would fit a, becoming a person like that. The thing that Marco was explaining that sacrificing you know uh, yourself for the kingdom is bad. I really prefer you like this. I don't want him becoming a person like that. So yeah, if 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 it really like you know comes down to uh, that you will have to become a person like that if he wants to become a shaman king. I would not want that. I want you to keep being the way he is because that's what actually makes him more uh you know mm, what do you call it makes him more preferable like at least i prefer this yo than some other yo like you know who thinks of everything as uh in a logical sense i don't want that yo i want this yo so yeah i don't want him becoming someone like that so yeah, we'll see we'll see what happens but yeah that was a great episode fantastic episode we had some new openings and endings as well and yeah so that was it. I, I wonder what Jun will do after this because I think in the end Jun didn't even come out. So who knows? Maybe maybe she'll say something else. Maybe she'll say that you know what? Nah, I don't think he'll say that. She'll say that. I, I was thinking maybe she'll say that you know what? Yeah, okay. Like you can participate in the fight. I don't think she'll say that because you know her hatred towards how is a lot. Not only her, the ex laws. So. As soon as they got to know that Yo is one of, like, you know, Hao's brother, they were like, nope, we can't have him here. So, yeah. But I, I do think that something is going to happen which will probably stop this whole situation. And, like, you know, Ren will also live and somehow Yo won't get out of this match. He will continue participating in, it, in this. Hopefully, may, maybe in the next episode we'll see that Ren himself wakes up and he's like, like yo like don't you dare show mercy like you know <laughs> sacrifice anything for myself like i i dare you if you do something like that when i like you know when i come come back alive i'll kill you myself i'm sure ren will say something like that <laughs> like he'll be like don't you dare do that like if i come back alive i'm going to murder you if you do something like that <laughs> oh, oh boy i can see that happening like it won't surprise me <laughs> <laughs> but yeah anyways that was it so thank you guys for watching this was my reaction to shaman king episode number uh, 28 so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know i'll check them out so yeah that's it so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next week with another episode of shaman king so until then goodbye and have a nice day